question. How many of you are afraid that violence in our world is becoming more prevalent? And how many of you think that the world will, um, violence will become one of the major factors eventually leading to the destruction of our world? Well, a few weeks ago, we all took a survey on the state of the world. The survey revealed to us that most of you are uncertain about the world in terms of violence and would guess it's becoming a more dangerous place. And although we live in Hong Kong, not necessarily the most dangerous place in the world. When we look at headlines in the news, like mass shootings, civil war in Syria, nuclear showdown with North Korea, it's no wonder we are afraid. However, let's see what history has to say. We'll start by looking at the statistics for the most destructive form of violence, war. Ever since the end of World War II, the frequency, duration, and lethality of wars has decreased. The world has since entered an era that could be known as the Long Peace. We will begin by exploring a specific type of war, wars between the great powers, which are countries holding the largest military and economic power in the world. These wars have been particularly violent and account for most of the war-related deaths in history. We can examine this by looking at this graph. The x-axis represents a timeline from 1500 to, tw to 2015, broken down into 25-year intervals. The y-axis shows the percentage of the great powers that were involved in a war during each interval. As you can see, 500 years ago, the great powers were constantly at war, while today, none are. In fact, the time period following World War II has since been described as the Long Peace, a term that we can all agree seems to contradict the images portrayed in the media in our current day and age. Not only has the frequency of major wars decreased, but also the death counts of wars and genocides compares to years in the past. By looking at these rates, gives us a good understanding about how much violence occurred throughout history. This graph well illustrates this trend. It compares the 100,000 battle deaths per year by year, from 1945 to 2015. It's hard to believe, but it's actually showing the progress humanity has made in terms of violence. And I know, it looks like there's been a lot of violence in the past 60 years, but compared to years before that, like World War II, that had 300 battle deaths per 100,000 people, it'd be, you could see it'd be way off this graph. Compared to the two ba 200 battle deaths per year in 2015, you can see how much of an improvement we are making to achieving world peace. Next, I will be exploring one of the most devastating forms of violence in the history of humanity, genocide. This graph shows genocide deaths from 1955 to 2015. You can see that death by genocide have been in decline ever since 1995. Before this, you can see a few spikes on the graph exhibit a few major genocides, such as the Chinese Cultural Revolution, the genocide in Bosnia, the Rwandan genocide, and the Cambodian genocide. In very recent genocides, around 4,000 civilians were killed by ISIS, around 5,000 were killed by Boko Haram, and around 2,000 Rohingya people from Myanmar were killed. Of course, this was absolutely terrible for those experiencing the genocides. When you look at the bigger picture, the death count is barely a fraction compared to the horrors we have experienced in the past. Let's see why violence has been on the decline. There are many factors contributing to this trend. The specific factor I'll be looking at is mainly based on the great powers. In the past, wars were, vic were viewed as romantic or heroic. And because of this, countries did not hesitate to fight in wars, resulting in deaths of millions of people. In fact, many of the most devastating wars in history were fought without hesitation or good reason. However, in today's world, war is widely viewed as unacceptable and violent, and so wars between great powers, and anyone really, have been less and less frequent. As of today, wars are practically unheard of, and continues to be one of the contributing factors as to why no great powers are currently at war. Another factor contributing to this trend is that many countries have been spending astronomical amounts of money on their militaries, developing new war technologies, and creating deadly killing machines. Because of this, many countries are just too scared to participate in war, as the potential consequences are just too high. This is one of the reasons the Cold War didn't escalate into a full-out bloodbath. America and Soviet Russia were just too scared to attack. The final factor we will discuss is, to the decrease of violence is that war is illegal under international law. Before the creation of the United Nations, countries could attack whoever they wanted, whenever they wanted, if they felt necessary or desirable. But now, war is illegal under international law. It's only legal if it's waged under self-defense or if the UN authorizes it. Many experts say that the outlawing of war is one of the main causes of the long peace. 
So the statistics clearly show that war is on the decline. Why is it then that we believe violence is actually increasing? The answer is simple, really. We have redefined the meaning of war and violence ever since the start of the 21st century. Violence has steadily been decreasing, and we have slowly been adjusting without realizing it. Since we have been experiencing the long peace, when something significant happens, such as the 250,000 people killed in the Syrian civil war, it is greatly magnified because of how extreme it is compared to everything else. This gives us the idea that we are living in violent times, when in reality we are probably the closest to achieving world peace in human history. In addition, we have valued human life more than we ever have. This gradually exaggerates our perception of harm and genocide. For example, if 5,000 people were killed in a conflict 100 years ago, when wars and conflicts were common, it would have seemed far less tragic if 5,000 people were killed in a conflict today. This is one of the reasons why war only seems like it's increasing and not decreasing. Despite the fact that there is still violence in the world, the human race is taking great strides to eradicate this violence. And although we have statistically progressed in terms of violence, our society still believes that violence is a prevalent problem on the rise. Instead, we need to be more optimistic about this issue, as optimism will empower us to, the, to continue lowering our violence rates in the future and eventually achieve world peace.